So for TGA with the VCN, LV opportunity obstruction, we have two main surgical options. One is the last daily type operation, and the other one is the aortic root translocation. And we have some modifications of these two procedures. So I'm going to talk about these procedures today. So last daily operation is a combination of the PST closure and the placement of RV to PA conduit, which is very familiar to congenital cardiac surgeons. So this is a relatively low risk operation for this very complex congenital anomaly. We can achieve the anatomy repair by Rastelli procedure. However, this procedure has some downsides. We know the problems of the RV to permeate conduit. And because we make a tunnel, from the LV to the aorta through the VSD. After Rastelli operation, the patient will have a long curved LV upper tract, which makes the patient prone to develop LV upper tract stenosis. And because there is a very large buffer in the RV, this can cause the RV upper tract stenosis. And <clears throat> also, the, this will increase, decrease the RV functional volume. So this procedure is unfeasible for the patient who has a hypoplastic RV. And also this um, procedure is unfeasible for the patient who has a distant or inlet type VSD. So the overall outcome is not so satisfactory. The long-term survival is not so satisfactory. And although almost all patients has a reoperation in 20 years, and this patient's RV related reoperation rate is very high. So to minimize the RB to premature conduit related problems, modification has been su suggested in RIB procedure. The main premature is taken anterior to the aorta and anastomosis to the native RB upper tract and the anterior aspect is reconstructed with a patch. So this um, procedure can make us to avoid the use of the extracardiac conduit. So by elimination of the RV to be a conduit, we can reduce the RV OT related reoperation rate. However, RV procedure also has the same problem with the Rastelli procedure because of the um, intraventricular tunneling. So after Rastelli RV procedure, we still have the same problem with the long curved LV outflow track and the chance of the LV outflow stenosis. And also this procedure is unfeasible for the patient who has a remote VSD. So aortic translocation has been proposed and Dr. Nikaito suggests a very um, brilliant idea to move the aortic root to the LV upper tract. So in the Kaido procedure, the proximal segment of the coronary arteries are mobilized and the aortic root is harvested from the RV and the main primary artery is transected at the level of a primary valve, and the harvest, the outlet septum is inside to the VSD, and so that we can open the standard LV upper tract. And then the LT root is um, transposed posterior to the LV upper tract, and then VSD is closed. After that, we take the main primary artery anterior to the aorta and use this native main primary artery to make a connection from the RV to primary artery and we use the patch to augment the outflow tag. So after the Dikaido procedure, we have a different geometry of the heart compared to the Rastelli operation. Because we transpose the aorta posterior to the LV, we can get a very straight and wide LV outflow tag. And also there, the face patch is almost straight so there's no volume space instruction in the RV. And this procedure is feasible even for the remote VSD because we opened our septum, so VSD patch is much easier compared to the Rastelli operation. And also though, because we transpose the aorta posteriorly, we have more space between the ascending aorta and the sternum. So this will decrease the chance of the RV OT compression by the sternum, and this will also decrease the risk of reoperation. So the kind of procedure has all these advantages. However, this procedure also has our drawbacks. Because of the extensive future line on the LV upper track, 
there is a risk of bleeding, and also there is a higher risk of heart block, and because the, the procedure time is long, there is also a higher chance of low cardiac output after the operation. And if the patient has a sizable native pulmonary valve, because we move the LT root posteriorly, there is a risk of the coronary artery overstretching. This will um, compromise the coronary artery um, blood supply. Also, if we make a deformation in the LT root, there is a chance of neo LT regurgitation. So overall, it's a very complex procedure with a little bit higher surgical risk. Lately, reported hospital mortality is about 5%. However, long-term outcome is very excellent. Compared to REV and RASL operation, the kind of procedure has higher freedom from death and higher survival and the less reoperation rate. However, this, even though this procedure has many advantages, this procedure is not indicated for all the patients. Because the, if the patient has a very small pulmonary valve size, advantage of the posture translocation does not have the great benefit. So for this patient, probably Rasselli operation would be, be good for the, for the patients. So there is no clear cutoff value, but it is said that the pulmonary valve size should be at least five millimeter to the daily get the benefit of this Nikaido procedure. Also, the Nikaido procedure can be used for the patient who has contraindications for last cell procedure, such as the hypoplastic RV or remote DIFSD. There are some modifications of the Nikaido procedure. So as I mentioned, if the patient's pulmonary valve size is uh, moderate, there's a risk of overstretching the coronary artery so to minimize the risk of coronary artery compromise, uh, another pr procedure has been suggested. After we take, down, take out the LT root, the LT root is rotated 180 degree and re-implanted on the LV upper tray and the coronary artery buttons are re-implanted on the neo LT root, such as the, we use the technique for the artery switch operation. So, in this technique, we can avoid or reduce the risk of coronary artery overstretching or kinking. Another modification of the LT root translocation is the half turned thoracic switch operation. Basically, it's the idea of the LT root translocation, but the difference is that in half turned thoracic switch operation, LT and the primary root are separated from the ventricular outflow tray as a single block and uh, rotated 180 degree and we implanted uh, uh, on the ventricular outflow track so that we can use the AOT root from the LV to aorta connection. Also the primary root is used to reconstruct the uh, connection between the RV to the primary artery. If the patient primary uh, stenosis is just mild, we can use the primary commissure technique to preserve the primary valve function. If the patient has a moderate PS, we can augment the RV upflow tray by a patch or monocuspid patch. So basically this is a LT root translocation technique. So it has all the advantages of the LT root translocation and adapting the artery switch operation technique, we can minimize the coronary artery related problems. At the same time, we can preserve the native primary valve function, which might be beneficial to reduce the risk of the RVOT related reoperation. So, the pain score reports the long, you know, mid or long term outcomes. In 15 years, the overall survival was very excellent. And surprisingly, in 15 years, there was, was no reoperation related to RV outflow track. Another modification of the LT translocation is the double root translocation. Science group reported the double root translocation. The basic concept is the almost same with the truncal switch operation. The, the only difference is the separation of the outflow track is a two separate root. So LV, LT root is used to connect the LV to aorta connection 
and the fumet, which is also used to, to make connection from the RB to fumet artery. So after double through to, uh, translocation, we can get a very anatomy or straightforward outflow track from the LV to aorta and the RB to fumet artery. Lately, Chinese school reported long-term outcomes of the double root translocation and double root translocation location outcome has been compared to the Rastel or RDV type operation. So in their result, double root translocation has a better outcome in terms of the primary root growth. And also double root translocation has a better freedom from death and heart failure and better freedom from reoperation. So this is a very nice procedure for the patient with a TJ with the implement stenosis. So we now have a, about these five surgical techniques. There are some more um, modifications of these procedures, but there was no big difference. So what procedure should we chose? So for the patient who has very mild PS, we can proceed with the arterial switch operation but we have to think about the later reoperation rate. If the patient has a very small native pulmonary valve, we can use a Rastel or RDV type operation because the uh, complex nicotine procedure benefits not overweight, the, uh, uh, doesn't have a beneficial effect compared to the Rastel type operation. And if the patient has a sizable native pulmonary artery, pulmonary valve, there is a risk of a coronary insufficiency, so we can use the modified technique to minimize the coronary artery problem. And if the patient has a sizable pulmonary valve, we can take the advantage of the using the native pulmonary valve, so half the truncal switch operation or double root translocation can be a good option, I think. And if the patient has a contraindications to rastelli type operation, such as the hypoplastic RV or remote VSD, I think this kind of LCU translocation or its modification can be beneficial for the patients. Thank you for your attention.